Nuclear is in a crisis mode. Nuclear power provides the greatest amount of carbon-free generation that the U.S. has today. 35 miles north of Manhattan, two nuclear reactors provided around 25 percent of the electricity for the Big Apple. You do the math, you understand why Indian Point's closure is absolutely the only smart move. But losing a nuclear reactor hurts the U.S.'s goals of a carbon-free future. This is the decade we must make decisions that will avoid the worst consequences of the climate crisis. This is the story of Indian Point Energy Center and how the closed power plant can impede zero emissions goals and be a specter of a vanishing atomic future. Well, it used to be that Indian Point was an amusement park, which is kind of amazing to me. Families took boats up the Hudson River to Buchanan, New York to ride the roller coasters. There's 300 miles of the Hudson River. It's been a conduit for commerce, haven for recreation. Nuclear reactors require a lot of water to keep them cool. They must have looked at that property and thought, oh, this is a great place for a nuclear plant. Con Edison acquired the land in 1954. The company finished construction of the Unit 1 nuclear reactor in 1964. Two more reactors followed. Unit 2 went online in 1974 and Unit 3 in 1976. And then in 2000, Entergy purchased Unit 3 from the state and Unit 2 from Con Ed. When both of those reactors were operating, it supplied about 25% of the electricity to uh, New York City. It's a very valuable piece of power. Before we continue about Indian Point, what is nuclear power? Fission nuclear power is splitting of heavy elements like uranium into smaller particles, and in the process of doing that, releasing a tremendous amount of energy. That energy in the form of heat is used to heat water that is then turned into steam, and that steam goes ahead and spins a turbine and generates electricity. Nuclear is complex technology, obviously. This is Michael Schellenberger. He's an author and he's advocated for nuclear power in front of Congress. But the plants themselves, they're just power plants. There's steam generators that spin turbines that make electricity. Over the years, attitudes started to shift towards Indian Point. There's two reasons. The combination is a lot of political opposition from environmental groups to go ahead and close the nuclear power plant because they were scared, especially in the wake of Fukushima, that a similar accident could happen over here. Riverkeeper has been watching the Indian Point power plant for decades. We've observed that as the plant ages, it becomes more of a safety risk beyond its failure to comply with the Clean Water Act. The Indian Point plant consumes more water every day than the city of New York. And after 9-11, we realized that as this plant ages, it becomes more and more of a risk to the 20 million people who live within 50 miles. Entergy disputes those claims, pointing to large investments in plant safety and reliability. There were people on all sides of this issue. There were people that never wanted the plant here. And other people recognized the value to the economy. Then in 2017, amid contract discussions, New York Governor Andrew Cuomo and Entergy made a decision. I've personally been trying to close it down for 15 years. Finally this year, I'm proud to announce that we have an agreement Indian Point will close in four years, 14 years ahead of schedule. In addition to environmental concerns, the economics in an unregulated power market no longer made sense. In January 2017, Entergy announced that it was shutting down Indian Point Unit 2 by 2020, Unit 3 by 2021. The primary decision was related to a drop in wholesale power prices. I mean, the big story in energy, of course, over the last decade and a half is the fracking revolution, which made natural gas really cheap in the United States, and that's put price pressure on both coal plants and nuclear plants in some places. The decommissioning process will take around 15 years. New Yorkers will be safer from the risk of a disaster at the plant, but what will replace the lost energy? Between 2017 and 2021, when they were planning on decommissioning the reactors, almost two gigawatts of fossil-fired power came online within 50 miles of Indian Point. So unfortunately, we are replacing in the immediate future the electricity generated by Indian Point 
not by renewables, but by fossil fuels in the form of those natural gas power plants. And Indian Point, I think, stands as a dramatic warning that carbon emissions will go up. We have very, very ambitious goals. The President administration has also said that it wants to have a carbon-free electrical power system by 2035. It's not possible to radically reduce your carbon emissions or your use of fossil fuels without nuclear power. The nuclear right now provides a little bit under 20% of our electricity. I think the Biden climate legislation gives so much subsidies to solar and wind that it could end up accelerating the closure of nuclear plants and thus have a counterproductive impact in terms of emissions. You know, when the sun sets is when people come home from work and start to use all their power. So there's no innovation to solar panels that can make them work better at night. And wind similarly is not reliable, especially if you think that weather is becoming more extreme. The nuclear power plants, they're a very, very dense source of electricity that generates a lot of electricity all the time. The power sources of the future will be a combination of renewables and nuclear power if we are really serious about reaching net zero in the time frames that the current administration has gone ahead and identified. Indian Point Unit 3 is the 12th reactor to close since the beginning of 2013. Right now, there are 55 sites and 93 reactors in operation. Reactors in Michigan and California are expected to close in the next few years. And there are two advanced reactor sites under construction in Georgia that have exceeded original budgets. I mean, the most important thing for the United States to do right now is to keep our nuclear power plants operating and build more reactors similar to the ones that are already in construction in Georgia. Nuclear is both scary and beneficial for the same reason. I think a lot of people have viewed the ability to do that as a curse or that we'll be in trouble with the gods. But I think that increasingly people understand it as a blessing. Nuclear power plants cannot go off like a weapon and they don't depend on weapons or vice versa, uh, but it's sort of the anxieties from one have displaced onto the other and that's why you get people that believe things that just aren't true. So how does nuclear power fit into our energy future? There's a lot of policy mechanisms that policymakers at the state or the federal level can use, but I think really what matters is being able to explain to people why nuclear is an important technology that's here to stay. It's not something that we could or should try to get rid of and so we need to make the most of it.